Hey, good evening, everyone. My name is Shadi Drakeford, and today we have the pleasure, the privilege, and the honor to recognize your Dodgeball of the Month for the month of October from Penn State himself, Christian. How are you doing tonight, my guy? I'm doing good. You know, life is busy, but life is good so far. Glad to be back and uh, playing the sport, definitely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So I remember when we first talk, talk um, early in September, you was telling me that your team was a top five team. I was kind of looking you kind of crazy. <laughs> But then all of a sudden, you know, once you beat JMU, you made a believer out of me. And, um, you know, you guys been rolling ever since. So how's, how's beating JMU for the first time in your team's history? How did that feel? Uh, honestly, uh, going into the second half, it was 3-1. And I was – or, yeah, it was uh, 2-1. I'm sorry, 2-1. And I was like, you know what, guys? I'm like, just have fun. Let's play play the dot ball we know. Go hard. Play fun. Um, and we just started coming back. We came back strong. And uh, we pulled the rug out from under him, and uh, it felt great being the underdogs and uh, being able to take control of the court. And uh, it just really pushed us on and honestly allowed us to play better for the rest of the tournament. And I think it's a, it was a good starting point for the beginning of the season, definitely. Oh, yeah, for certain. It definitely kind of caused like a huge shift in the, in the entire dynamic, not only like within the East Coast, but also within the league as a whole. So it's it's been very exciting to watch. Um, with that being said, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to the Dallas World quite some momentarily, but I know you're a senior. This is yep. your last year. What is your major, though? Uh, so I am majoring in pre-medicine. I switched from chemistry my sophomore year, but and then I'm, minor, sorry, I'm minoring in uh, Arabic and chemistry. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. So... Wow, Arabic. Okay, I know that's a very difficult language to speak right there. <laughs> it's not as bad as most people think. Honestly, the hardest part was just learning the alphabet. Uh, we would go through that 15 times a day during the class, and I was like, this is brutal. But once you get it, everything's good to go. Nice. Nice. Okay, definitely to, definitely to be mindful of that because that is not a joke. But but I know with uh, with the influence that's taking place within Asia and the Middle East, I know that Arabic is definitely becoming one of those one of those mainstream languages that is very very important. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to use it uh, definitely in my career in the military. And um, honestly, just I can hope I can meet some people just through speaking the language. Absolutely, I, I'm pretty sure you will, my friend. I'm pretty sure you will. Um, so you told me that you was a senior. How long have you actually been with the team? Uh, so I joined my freshman year, um, but the first semester I was like, you know what, I really want to hunker down and study. And then October came around and I was like, man, I want to join a club. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I'm like, I might join like Ultimate Frisbee. And then I looked at it, I was like, that looks awful. And I saw a club dodgeball and I was like, that was like a good time. So I went out to the practice in like the beginning of November and then I immediately just got absolutely crushed by a throw from one of our uh, one of our power throwers, and I was like, "Wow, that hurt!" But I wanna I wanna get him back for that. So I just kept playing from there, and uh, things kind of kept going. And I was like, "Man, I'm pretty good at this." I'm like, like for the most part, I'm like, I may not be the best, but I'm having a good time. So I just kind of stuck with it, and uh, yeah, ever since freshman year, it's been great. And then somehow I ended up being president. I don't know how that happened, but it just Kind of happened. I was like, "All right, sure, I'll, I'll do this." I mean, that's that's one of the cool things about, um, you know, just improving as a player, as a person. I, I think your peers kind of recognize a leader when they saw it, and they was like, "Hey, I think he's going to be the guy that's going to lead us to the next level." And so far, it's been paying big dividends. Yes, sir. Big, big dividends. So. This is actually a, this is actually a fun question right here. So, how has the transition from, you know, being a relatively new player as a sophomore, to the leader that you are now, and the key contributor due to COVID then? Because I know like last year, COVID nineteen did a number on a lot of teams, but yeah. it seems like your team actually came out not not just unscathed, but actually considerably better 
which is not an easy thing to do. Yeah. We, um, I mean, I won't lie, COVID-19 still uh, a couple of great, great players that I wish we could still uh, play on the team with. But, um, I mean, they're doing great things now, so they're all healthy. They're all good, which I'm very happy about. And um, thankfully, it wasn't like most of the other teams that I've, uh, I've like, talked to where they're like, yeah, we only have, like, two or, like, four returning players. Um, we have, I think, nine returning players or eight returning players. Um, a lot of our team was really, really young. Um starting my, I guess, sophomore year. Um, so that's been honestly just great to see the old players coming back out. Um, and uh, I mean, I was talking with the team and they're like, oh yeah, I practiced dodgeball over the break. I'm like, you did? I'm like, all right. So they uh, they kept in uh, kept in touch. I, I practiced obviously a little bit. I would try to find a wall I could. And uh, obviously it wasn't the same. So our catching ability has gone down a little bit, but our, uh, we're still rocking the throws. And um, honestly, Penn State, we've always kind of had a great um, diversity throughout the years um, of students. So we've always had a good amount of uh, mainly seniors and juniors, but we always had some good uh, like star sophomores and freshmen um, that have always been on the starting 12. And this year's no different. So thankfully, we just kind of have new players always circulating, which I'm happy about. That is amazing. That is, that is absolutely amazing. And with that being said, this actually leads off to another question that I feel like is equally as important because everyone definitely know your name by now, sure. thanks to the hard work that you've been doing. But with that being said, because you definitely know this better than I do as well as the rest of the league, who else on Penn State should we be looking out for that deserves some recognition? I would definitely say uh, my other captain. Uh, so it's me and somebody named Brady Eck. He has got a cannon and a half. It hurts getting hit by him. Um, and he's got hands for days too. He catches everything. So he's definitely somebody in practice where we're like, Hey, listen, don't throw alone. I'm like only solo, uh, only team throws, uh, no solo throws on him. Cause if you throw a solo cut thrower, he's going to catch it. Um, so he's a senior with me too. And then we also have, uh, we call him Odell, uh, Noah, Noah group. Uh, Ooh, he, Odell. he's, a, he's our hands. See, that's what he has on the back of his Jersey. So we're going to have to change that this year, unfortunately, but, uh, he, he's definitely our catcher. Um, and then as far as young guys go, um, we have some really, really great new recruits. Uh, we have Hunter Stewart, uh, it was somebody we call cloud. He goes by cloud. Um, they're both great cannons and great hands. And we also have a little, uh, ball of energy named Joey tiger. Um, he just runs around the court. He doesn't, he's like the energizer bunny. He doesn't stop moving. It's, uh, it's, it's really fun to watch actually. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to be able to sustain that for 50 minutes. is not an easy task. I know. I know. I always ask him, I'm always like, how are you, are you, are you good? Are you good? He's like, yeah, I'm good to keep running. I'm like, all right. I'm like, you're in, stay in, keep running. <laughs> so we got some really good players. I could go through every player in the uh, starting 12 and more. Uh, I can go into depth with everything. And I, they're just all fantastic players, honestly. That is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Um, what teams outside the East Coast are you looking the most? Are you most forward looking to you know to take on? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I mean, classic Grand Valley. Uh, I'm super excited to play them. Super excited to see how it shakes down. I think we played them. We played them one time in nationals that I can remember, and then we were kind of getting set up to play them my sophomore year, and then you know everything just kind of fizzled out, and then junior year was a bust. So I'm really looking forward to see. Uh, like what they're made of, all the steel that I've heard of. Um, I'm super excited to play them. And I saw that uh, Cincinnati is also like number one of the power. Uh, so I really, really want to play them. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, honestly, a couple of Michigan teams and a couple of Ohio teams that we just haven't gotten the chance to play yet on the East Coast, I'm super excited for. Awesome. Awesome. Definitely as it stands right now, in my humble opinion, I feel like Penn State is currently the second best team on the East Coast based off of the body of work that you guys have done. The only opponent that you lost to is Towson, and that's not yeah. an easy team to beat. Unfortunately, our counterparts, JMU, went 0 and 3 at the time. That. Yeah, that yeah, that's that that was kind of tough, man. Cause I was yeah. watching it, I was like, oof. Like, oof. Yeah. Like this I, is I felt I felt bad. I'm not gonna lie, I felt bad. I was like, I really want to play these guys. I really want to play GM, JMU again too. Actually, uh, moving away from uh, Michigan and Ohio teams, I really want to play JMU again. We only got to play them that once. Um, I want to see if they change anything. Honestly, um, I don't know if it was just an off 
some people just have off tournaments, and uh, I totally get that. Uh, I really want to see uh, if they're still uh, they still have the same fire they showed. Yeah, I I can definitely say for certain there's a lot of JMU players they want to change the script because the lead's kind of looking at them not in the same manner how it, it's it's used to be seen. It's a weird thing to say the least. It's it's yeah. actually it's actually weird for me to say that JMU is currently the third best team on the East Coast. <laughs> that that has to me to hear you say that though. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> right, that's, <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like that never like you would never in a million years hear that out of my mouth. Number two, fair. One, understood. Third, it's like, well, I know we're in a pandemic, but this is <laughs> something this, happened. <laughs> right. This is weird, but I but but I digress. Um last question. Actually, no, not last question. This is the <laughs> second to last question. Um, okay. How high is the ceiling for your team? And what do you think are the biggest areas your team can improve upon this season to take that next step into truly becoming a title contender? The ceiling, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty high. I would say we're probably about – when it comes to throwing power, I'm going to say there's there's not too much more we can work on. We have some heavy throwers and – at this point, it's just kind of getting our other, uh, maybe not like players who don't throw as fast as some of us, um, getting them up. But I would say we're like, I would say our throwing power is, let's say at, we're doing out of 10. I would say it's definitely like a nine. Um, I would say our catching ability and our uh, our defense ability could use a lot of work. I would say we're definitely probably like a five, but our energy is definitely 10 out of 10. We have something we call recess. Um, I don't know. You might have heard us like yell it a couple times during tournaments. Yeah. And basically, when we say recess, everybody runs the line. We're throwing right off the bat. We're hoping for the best, and we're just having a lot of fun and high energy that no other team I've seen or played against can match. Um, and so we're uh, we're seeing if we can get into some teams' heads uh, when we play recess. And it's uh, it's worked a couple times, but we've uh, we've gotten into recess mode a little bit too late a couple times. So. Um, I would say as of right now, I would say we're definitely operating at about probably seventy percent of what we could uh, what we could possibly achieve. Maybe maybe seventy five or eighty. I might be undershooting that a little bit. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, because like right now, in my humble opinion, your 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 projection, ugh, you are projected to at least make it to the elite eight. Yeah, which haven't okay. been done at all in Penn State history which is already a mild achievement, but I know this is your last ride. You want to go <laughs> beyond the elite eight. So. Definitely. We're trying to, uh, we're trying to run away with it, honestly, this year. I don't know if that's going to happen. I mean, we're trying our best. Um, and so definitely um, what I've noticed a change definitely in the last couple of years is our, uh, our captains have progressively gotten the team more and more disciplined. Um, uh, instead of just playing for fun. Now we're, uh, we're shooting for titles. And so um, you can definitely see a little bit of a change um, in the uh, in the team, and just uh, you see how much more disciplined they are. They're kind of sticking to more, you know, just play the dodgeball we play, and we know we know we we know we're good, um, and we know that we can achieve a lot of great things as a team if we work together. Um, so just trying to keep level heads during tournaments is really helping, and trying to, you know, as. If, we're trying to keep that discipline up, especially when we're in the neutral zone, to try to bully the other team in the neutral zone and not back down. Um, the first tournament, we did really well with that. Um, and we're just going to try to keep going from there. Yeah, I will say, like, one of the good things about this year being, like, you know, an unusual year because of COVID-19, not only did it reset the standings, but it also reset the teams. So now – it's very possible for a different team to actually win the whole thing. That's not a crazy statement. For many years, it was just GV and everybody else. Exactly. Granted, I still believe GV is GV. I'm just saying that the probability of somebody else coming up, you know, like a Cincinnati, a Towson, a Penn State, um, the Ohio State University. <laughs> I, I know. I, of course. I know. Of course. I know. I had the D in there. Uh, I know. I if I don't say the if I don't say the, then they're gonna be like, "Hey, like, what are you doing?" <laughs> what, what, what they're gonna be looking at me like mad crazy. But the probability of other teams potentially competing for a championship goes a lot higher. So it actually makes the season extremely fun to watch. 
Sure, exactly. Right. It makes it more exciting. Absolutely. All right, so now the last question. So tell us a little bit about the Christian we don't see or the dodgeball court. What do you like to do beside playing dodgeball? Oof. Uh, so if you don't already know, uh, I am in Air Force ROTC. So I'm a, I'm a squadron commander. So I'm in charge of about 30 people, uh, making sure they all get through the program uh, well. So that takes up a, a ton of time. I just got done studying for uh, MCATs and taking the MCATs. So now we're all applying for medical school and everything like that. Oof. So yeah, it's, it's been a process. I won't lie. It's been a long process. Um, but I mean, other than, other than all the work, uh, what I love to do for fun, honestly, I love working out. I love playing all kinds of sports. Um, I'm always, it seems like I'm always on a new hobby, uh, whether that be either drawing or working out or playing volleyball or golf or anything like that. Um, I'm always, I'm always, always active. There's never a, a dull moment really in my life. Um, but when it comes uh, when it comes Friday night, um, if not hanging out with friends, I'm sitting on my couch relaxing and I am uh, watching a movie or just chilling and <laughs> Try, trying to you know just relax after a long week. That that sounds like the the senior college student not going <laughs> out to the not going late at night. It's like hey, you know, yeah, I just yeah, yeah night is my bedtime, you know. <laughs> He said bedtime. Oh, man. He's, <laughs> it's like he's a he's like he's a full adult, y'all. Like, he, like he's a grown adult, man. He's a grown man talking about bedtime. My goodness, that's that that's funny. But but that's why I know it's real. Like, oh yeah, like I have a bedtime because I gotta get up at four or five <laughs> o'clock in the morning. I've also been working on my uh, my cooking recently, so I'm uh, I won't say I'm master chef yet, but I'm I'm getting there. You know, I'm getting there. I'm really close. Okay, I I didn't know that. That's that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> that's that's actually pretty cool, man. Got to bring something to the next tournament. Don't worry. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh let's go. I, I know one of the parents. I believe her name is Angel Tiger. She was actually yep. ax, She was actually asking like if I was going to be at the Towson tournament because she wanted to bring me some food, <laughs> bring some lunch. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, because she saw like I was getting tired and I needed something to eat. So that was pretty cool, but but yeah, I mean, if they allow food in the jail, man, if they if they if they allow us to have a good time, then yeah, that would be that'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah, Mrs. Tiger's uh, the Energizer Bunny's uh, mom. She's oh. uh, she's, she's awesome. Oh, okay. See, now now it all makes sense because every single time what I see her say, we are. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> Penn State. Like, you know, I got to finish a sentence every single time I see it, like on the stream. Like, yep, I gotta, I gotta finish a statement. So, <laughs> exactly right. We, um, it's funny too. Uh, speaking of like people who have kind of like come out of nowhere, including Joey's mom, she's helping out with like a ton of stuff. Um, I had a contact about, I guess it was, it was either September or like early, early October. Um, I got like an email from somebody, and they're like, hey, my name's, um. I don't know. I, I, his name's Andrew. He's like, I'm with Red Bull. I'm like, oh, I'm like, cool. I'm like, what do you, I'm like, what do you want? He was like, I'd love to like give you guys product for like any of your like upcoming events and stuff like that. He's like, you guys can call it an unofficial sponsorship. So I'm like, that'd be great. So every single tournament, we always come with a case of Red Bull. And uh, I like to attribute that a little bit to our energy that we have on the court. I'm not going to lie. But uh, yeah, it was just something interesting that popped up. I was like, that's pretty cool. That is cool because I definitely know there's a lot of teams in the league that don't have sponsorships, so that's pretty dope. Yeah, definitely. That's pretty dope. Well, I mean, with that being said, I don't have any more questions. Um, <laughs> I, I definitely thoroughly enjoy, enjoyed this interview, though. Yes, sir. I, I highly enjoyed it. It was awesome. Awesome, awesome. And with that being said, um, my name is Shadi. We got Doswell of the Month for October Christian himself. Um, team got a lot of energy. They're fun to watch. And hopefully we'll see him at Towson. If not, we'll definitely see him around the East Coast as well as the rest of the league in the spring semester. And we are signing off.